We now invite two more important leaders for a panel talk. We have with us Maria Mendelucci. She's the CEO of the We Mean Business Coalition. She has 25 years of experience in sustainable development, energy, and climate action. Maria is a member of the executive board of the Science-Based Targets Initiative, and that engages more than 2,800 companies. And we have you with us here, wonderful Maria. And we also have with us Eva, Eva Carlson, who is CEO of Houdini. And um, it's a progressive and rapidly growing Swedish outdoor brand and also a trailblazer in corporate responsibility. Hi there, Eva. Hi. And since 2001, Eva's been together with a team of like-minded. She's been redesigning a business to become a force for good providing circular products and products as a service as solutions, products as a service as a solution. So welcome to you, Eva Carlson. And I'd like to start with Maria, uh, Maria Mendelucci. There's been a risk of greenwashing by using offsets. Uh, let's talk about this. We need to accelerate investments in nature. Um, how can this be achieved without risking the greenwashing? Thank you. Thank you very much for having me with you. The overarching issue is that we don't have adequate rules and guidelines to regulate the both supply and demand side requirements for carbon markets. This makes it dif very difficult to di differentiate between what Netflix is doing, buying high quality nature-based credits on top of its decarbonization efforts, and what many, for example, oil and gas companies are doing, buying cheap credits while increasing fossil fuel production. And this needs to change. So to start, we need to establish consensus around the rules for demand side credibility, helping ensure investment strengthen rather than undermine global action towards achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement. We have been working with the Voluntary Carbon Market Initiative, BCMI, to help set these rules and think that for companies to credibly engage in carbon markets, they should meet certain minimum criteria, and this includes have a science-based target, be taking action towards meeting that science-based target, that's it, reduce emissions, annually disclose those emissions across all scopes, report or commit to report on carbon market investment separately from their GHG inventory and transparently disclose the credits that have been purchased. On the supply side, we need to get bad credits out of the market and ensure we have more integrity in the credits that are used. This should address technical considerations such as additionality, permanence, leakage, double counting, and conservative baselines. But it is also important for nature-based credits to provide co-benefits for the biodiversity and sustainable livelihoods. Mm -hmm. These are the issues that the Natural Climate Solution Alliance works on and that is also being tackled through the Integrity Council for Voluntary Carbon Markets, which is called ICBCM. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you. you. So Maria, do we need a new narrative for this? What you're mentioning here, do we need a new narrative for people to really grasp and understand the need for action here? And the, Absolutely. The differences? Absolutely. We believe a new narrative is needed for corporate leadership on climate and nature. And this leadership recognizes the big picture. Companies not only need to reduce their own emissions uh, aligned with science, but also they have the imperative to contribute towards the world net zero and nat nature positive goals. Mm -hmm. So we know we won't meet our global climate goals without ending nature loss by 2030, like Emma has said. And we won't end nature loss by 2030 without companies significantly increasing their investment both within and beyond their value chains. Mm -hmm. So we believe the new narrative is very simple. <laughs> we think that every company should address at a minimum of 10% of their unabated emissions through investment in nature on a pathway to net zero. So this is, they need to decarbonize their emissions by 90%. This is what the net zero standard says. And the 10% remaining which are unabated emissions on average, should be invested in nature now, not in 2050. Thank you, Maria. Speaking of narrative, I'm turning now to Eva. Do we need, um, I mean, why is it really important with narratives for companies to be involved and, and, and to sort of tell the story of sustainable lifestyles? 
Well, I think um, the positive energy that comes from uh, moving towards a, a common narrative or a common vision, rather than rather than reducing harm or becoming slightly less bad, towards uh, re restoring um, the planet and create thriving uh, societies and local communities. I think that is the compelling story that we can tell, and we need to tell that. And I believe, I truly believe, it will accelerate the shift that we need within the, this decade uh, or even within a, if only a few years. So um, in every part of society to bring that positive narrative and, and then I think it's, it's about a positive narrative but also being uh, uncompromising, uncompromisingly honest with where, the, where we are now uh, as a company I, ha I need to acknowledge that we are still uh, on the wrong side of history, being uh, degenerative. Even though we worked since 2001 uh, towards, uh, in the transformation towards circular and regenerative, we're still uh, in some sense uh, on, the, on the wrong side, so to speak. It takes, it takes massive efforts, but there's also, uh, it's also the fact that nowadays, most of the technologies we have for the apparel industry. I'm from an apparel brand um, that have, has managed to transform from linear to circular. Not only production, uh, for sure, circular by design, but also looking at, at use and creating that narrative of how, how we can have a, you know, a thriving way of life. It's not about a narrative where we're going to uh, compromise with everything in our lives. It doesn't have to be that way. We can create fantastic products that are circular. We can create, we can have fantastic ways of life without flying across the globe. So, so bringing that um, to the audience or to every user that we have, and collaborating with others that we, to expand that narrative uh, across the industries and so forth is important. Thank you very much, Eva Carlson from Houdini. I'm turning now to Emma Stewart. Uh, as you mentioned, Netflix has, Netflix has produced a number of fantastic films. Uh, recently, the blockbuster um, with uh, Don't Look Up. Uh, how do you regard your responsibility to really to act on climate from your platform? Well, as a, as a global citizen in the world, we have a responsibility to align our own operations with the direction that science tells us is necessary to stabilize the climate and also by extension the economy which we operate within so hence our net zero plus nature program um, as maria mentioned we go uh, well out of our way to scour the world for the highest quality carbon credits which we purchase above and beyond our science-based target for decarbonization which we are on track to meet by 2030 uh, but to do so requires five different screens um, and diligence processes that entail the review of over 100 million metric tons of carbon credits from 30 different countries. Many companies don't have the resources or, in some cases, the technical expertise in-house to do that sort of review. So we count ourselves very lucky and, in fact, have tried to be very transparent with our work such that others can benefit from those exercises. So if you go to our sustainability.netflix.com website, for example, you can find uh, a full list of the carbon credits we have purchased uh, from around the world, but also the five steps that we put every project through in order to determine that they are indeed the highest quality nature-based solutions. I like to describe that work as having a nice glass of wine, but you discover that in fact, there's a hole in the bottom of the wine glass. That's what we're currently doing today is we're pouring money into efforts like carbon removal without protecting existing carbon sinks and stocks. We are literally destroying the ecosystems that have for millennia stabilized the climate while experimenting with technological solutions that will be necessary, no question. But today, um, this decade, the most important thing where we can put our investments is in protecting nature. As Johann Bock said, they go hand in hand. A climate solution is, an, is the protection of nature, and the protection of nature is a climate solution. So that to us is very important. 
Um, and then in terms of the responsibility to our audiences, it's very simple. They have told us that they are interested uh, in these topics. In fact, 80% on average across our markets are alarmed or concerned about climate. And not surprisingly, when people are alarmed or concerned about something, they want to talk about it. They want to deal with it. They want to grapple with it. And it also makes for the most marvelous stories. When you think about the both the absurdity of something like uh, what Don't Look Up portrays, that humanity has managed to bury our head in the sand um, instead of contend with something that literally is unplugging our life support systems as we speak, uh, versus the very inspiring circular economy uh, and ways of living that Eva was describing that you see portrayed in something like Down to Earth by Zac Efron or um, The Minimalists or Best Leftovers Ever, which is one of my children's favorites. And children understand this. So our kids and family programming is particularly sensitive to the protection of wildlife, to the protection of nature. This is something that uh, the next generation, uh, I think, and many generations uh, in the past have naturally understood. And it's really just a question of um, bringing them the, 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 creati the creativity and, uh, and skill that they deserve. Thank you very much, Emma Stewart. And Johan Falk, would you please uh, step onto the stage a little bit further in so you could reflect on, on, uh, on what Emma, Maria and Eva has talked about in the panel. What are your reflections from your perspective from the Exponential Roadmap Initiative? I think there is uh, such a tremendous job being done by companies like Houdini, Netflix and so on. And I think what is really important is we need to develop you know, practices which other companies can apply really fast. We really don't have the time to sort of roll out things uh, really slowly. We need to simplify it. We need to sort of create these recipes from leaders which can be copied by others as quickly as ever possible. So we, don't, we can't afford to take like five years to and overcomplicate things. So we need to simplify things, make it sharp. We need to scale it exponentially. And I think um, with leaders like we hear today, we need to do that uh, together. So that's one, I think one of, one of our tasks as, a, as well to do together with women business and other organizations to help that type of scaling of best practices. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Joa. Let's turn now to our hubs. I'm not sure if it's Nairobi or Washington that will be connecting with us now to see if they have any reflections they'd like to share from their end. See if we can get... Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can have. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. We have uh, Kenya. We have uh, Shutta. I see them coming, joining us here. So I'd like to turn to Shutta in, in Washington, D.C. first. Reflections on the, the presentations and also the panel talk here from your end, Shutta Shakraborty. Yes, thank you. This was a wonderful panel. And it's really an interesting to hear how companies are making the effort to reach diverse audiences right here on the Zoom call. We are tuning into Washington, D.C., Europe, and Africa. And to be able to reach a broad base and to actually give information to these audiences that are actionable so that the information resonates in a way that results in actual steps to be taken by individuals so that they can better safeguard themselves, their communities, and really contribute to climate solutions. That's what these companies are doing. And I especially am interested in the engagement that companies like Netflix are doing with other stakeholders outside of the traditional climate community. So not just your scientists, not just your regulators and your uh, those that are in uh, policymaking positions, but also celebrities, also influencers, to really reach that widest audience possible and to get new engagement and excitement around hey, we can actually be part of this solution and we can stave off this crisis. It doesn't have to be a crisis. It can actually be a future that is better or brighter than anything we've even imagined that we can all be a part of and contribute to, one that is truly just and one that is truly equitable. That's what's exciting. So I would just wanna thank the panelists for all that they do and for really the effort to be collaborative, bring in the various stakeholders and to reach those audiences to really excite passions in people because everybody really can make a contribution to overcoming this crisis. 
Thank you very much, Jutta. Let's now turn to Nairobi, where we have Peter on the microphone. Uh, please share your thoughts on this topic, Peter. Thank you, Katarina. It has been an exciting session, having the panelists talk about the, how the business aspect can be incorporated. And uh, the panel, the audience here has been excited to learn one, one or two, three things, and we are, we are thrilled. So for us, we can think about how the business can come into place to put sustainability measures to how we, to decarbonization and how to bring down this issue of the climate change. They are place and cannot be undermined. And it's a pleasure to learn what Godini, the likes of exponential roadmap from John Falk, their contribution to bringing the climate uh, challenge down. So we are here and we understand that uh, a company like, or uh, rather a motor sport uh, uh, taker like WRC, World Rally Championship, has put measures, that is what we've learned from one of, one, of our, one of our panelists here, who is with us and joining us uh, from this hub, that we can have measures put in place to, cap, uh, to bring in the uh, sustainability measures. And in that way, for them, they do by planting trees. They are planning to plant at least 90 million trees with a uh, combination or with a place of the government and other stakeholders. And so that is commendable and that is great. So we are thrilled and that is great for the panels looking forward to the next session to learn more from it thank you katarina well thank you very much peter from nairobi and thank you very much emma stewart maria mendelucci eva colson and shuta from washington and Juan falk of course thank you